Good afternoon, and thank you so much for coming to this special sock series of Wednesdays with Ray. If you've been with us so far, thank you for coming along. Today is going to be the last video in our sock tutorial, but not to worry, we will have more tutorials incoming. So, maybe this is your first pair of socks that you finished? Maybe it's your hundredth pair? A question I get a lot, both from new and seasoned knitters, is, is wet blocking really that important? And my answer is almost always an emphatic yes. I am a big believer in this being the final step of your knitting and one that should not be skipped. Not only does it help to clean off your wool from any dust, from any oils that may have gathered in it over time, it also helps to take out any memory and kinks from the yarn that might be distorting your tension or your stitch pattern. It also gets into that ply of the yarn and allows it to bloom, which really allows all of your stitches and texture to pop, which is particularly important when you have cable patterns such as this. How you block is just as important as blocking at all. It is always recommended to use cool water, though I will occasionally use warmer temperatures for certain knits. It's always a good rule of thumb to use cool water, particularly with the kind of yarns that we tend to see in socks, things that might be hand dyed and especially things that might be super wash. Now, if you've been using the Piri for this sock project, as I have, you don't want to use super hot temperatures as it is not super wash because you don't want that yarn to felt on accident. Whether you're using a bowl like I am or filling a sink, make sure you fill it with your wool wash and then place your sock in it as running water over it will also serve to agitate and partially felt that wool. The reason I prefer using cool water on super wash as well is not only do I want my vibrant dyes to stay put, but the chemical process that the yarn goes through to make it superwash actually changes the core structure of the yarn, rendering it less stable. If you have ever taken something out of a warm bath and let its weight hang from it and it's superwash, you might have noticed that the size of it grew quite a bit. And there's no way to know with superwash beforehand how much a particular item is going to grow. And unfortunately, unlike with non-superwash items, once that distortion has occurred, you can't re-block it to fix it. It is already set in. When you're ready to block, I do recommend using a designated wool wash. I don't recommend using wool light on your knitted items because A, it can strip out the lanolins from your yarn, which we want to stay put. It's sort of nature's scotch guard after all, but it can also strip those vibrant hand dyes from your yarn, which is the point of using them. For wool washes that I specifically recommend, you can always use the two fancy blends that we have available in our shop that also add essential oils and lanolins to your knits. You can also use rinse-free wool washes such as eucalyn or soak. Once your knitted item has spent some time soaking very gently without agitation in that wash bath, this has been soaking now for about 15 minutes, you gently remove it, never wring it, but gently press some of that excess water out. And then I like to roll mine in a towel, just gently, to help get the excess water out. From there, make sure you lay it down on a clean, dry towel or cloth so that it can block and dry as quickly as possible. In dry climates, such as we have here in Colorado, this process happens fairly quickly, but in more humid climates, it's not unusual for an item to take a couple, even a few days to dry, depending on the weight of the yarn. Some items that you may find helpful when blocking the final shape of your sock might be pins, especially if you have points or picots that need to be exaggerated. If you like, you can simply lay it out like this to dry flat. You may also find it helpful to use an actual sock blocker, particularly if you are making a lace sock. I have one here. The nice aspect of this is it does keep a bit of tension and shape on the sock that is harder to achieve when you just lay it flat, particularly if you do have an open work or lace sock. If you do choose to use a sock blocker to finish the blocking of your sock, be very careful not to distort and stretch it as you place it on the blocker. It's not unusual for me to actually let a sock dry part of the way before placing it on here for its final shaping. If your sock or item has become distorted while it was blocking, as long as it is not superwash, and even then, sometimes gently with superwash, keep in mind you can always gently move and shape it into the desired shape and let it dry. When blocking items that are too delicate for a full wet block, you can always do what we call a spritz block, where you dampen the knitted item down and lay it to shape. 
You can also optionally add herbs or even essential oils to your blocking water, of course being careful about sensitivities. Thank you once again for joining us on this sock series of Wednesdays with Ray. We appreciate you so much and we hope we'll see you again for the next knit along.